Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to uh, you all, wherever you are joining from. I hope you're doing well and safe. Thank you for taking the time to attend my webinar today. Automated functional tests can be created in multiple different ways. Two popular approaches to create functional tests for web applications is by using recording techniques and by writing code. There are many testing frameworks that provide recording as an approach to create automated tests. In addition to recording, these tools also provide out-of-the-box actions that can be used to enhance the automated test that is created initially using recording. For those of you who aren't familiar with Testim, Testim is a GUI functional testing solution for testing web applications. Testim introduced artificial intelligence and machine learning into GUI functional test over five years ago to reduce test maintenance. In this session, I will cover how you can author a test using recording and then enhance your automated test using test teams, test logic, validations, and out-of-the-box actions. Hello again, my name is Sudreti Mondel. I manage technical sales at Testim. I have spent the past decade or so working on a variety of testing tools, including automated functional and performance testing, test modeling, test data management, service virtualization, continuous delivery, continuous testing, and DevOps. The agenda for today's session looks like this. I will quickly review how to create an automated test using recording and execute the test. I will then show you how to add validation and logic into your automated test. This will be followed by how to incorporate test data in your test. Then I will cover a set of actions that can be used to provide various features to your test. This will be followed by how to incorporate custom script into your test and best practices. If you have any questions, please type it in the chat window. I will try to answer them at the end of the presentation or post the answers in a blog post. So testing allows you to author a test using recording, which is um, fast authoring without using any code. And testing also allows you to create tests by writing code using testing's uh, test development kit. You can create automated tests by running your test manually in the record mode. And testing captures keystrokes, mouse clicks, drag and drop, resize, scroll, and other basic options that typically you would use to interact with your application on the test. If you're trying to create a test uh, using code, you can use JavaScript to author your test. And uh, you can also export a recorded test into JavaScript code using TestTeams TDK. In terms of executing your test, you can run them locally from the browser, execute automated tests like in the playback mode from the test editor, and you can also execute automated tests locally from the test list. And I'll show you a demo of that. If you'd like to run your test remotely, which is what most of our customers do, you may want to group your test into suites, test plans, and labels. These are different ways of grouping tests. And then you can execute your test in the Selenium grid provided by testing or third-party Selenium grids by Sauce Labs or Browser Stack. And you can either schedule your test runs or you can use the command line interface that testing provides uh, to execute your test runs. The CLI, the testing CLI can be used to integrate with your continuous integration on continuous delivery systems. So let me quickly jump into a demo. And uh, so here is uh, testing's uh, interface or the testing's test editor. You can create a new test using the new test icon or you can also uh, use the create new test uh, button here to create your new test. This will take you to Testim's test editor. Um, the Testim test case consists of one or more test steps represented by a rectangle. The first test step is added by default. This is the setup step. This is where you specify your application under test um, base URL. You can name your test, and then you can specify some configuration options, which includes resolution, the browser you want to run the test on, the operating system that you want to run the test on, uh, some timeout parameters, and then uh, some hooks information, which I'll cover later on. So I can create uh, my automated test 
by using recording, clicking on the red button here. So when I do that, this uh, brings up my application under test, which is a demo application from Testin. I can now click on login, type in a user and a password to create a simple automated test. I can stop the recording using the uh, red button again, and now I'm ready to play the test. So that's how simple it is to create an automated test using recording in Testin. To play the test, I can play the test locally using the play button, and this can be done in the regular mode, in incognito mode, step by step, or I can run the test remotely on a grid which can be a test team Selenium grid or other third party grids. You can, I can save the test, um, I can provide a version. So test teams uh, supports uh, um, test versioning and I can group tests together using suites, which is nothing but a group of tests and plans are a group of suites or labels and labels is another way of creating groups of tests. Um, as you can see, I have this test tagged with labels application one or regression system test and so on. So I can go to my test editor, click on the play button. This will now play the steps that I recorded um, here to, uh, to create my automated test. There you can see the test executed successfully and that was executing a test locally from uh, the browser. You can also execute test remotely using schedules and you will specify that under schedule runs, you create a new schedule. You can specify the suite you want to run, which is essentially a group of tests. You can specify different configurations that you want to use for different browsers. If you would like to override your base URL and the grid where you want to run your test and the schedule. You can also specify parallel runs if you'd like to run your test in parallel and retries. In addition, testing provides a command line interface to execute your test. And this is what you need to include into your CI solutions like Jenkins and TeamCity to incorporate continuous testing as a part of your continuous integration or continuous delivery. So let me jump back into my presentation and uh, kind of cover a few additional things. So, okay. so what I've done so far is I've created a test and I've executed an automated test. How do I augment this? How do I enhance this? So testing provides a variety of different features to enhance your automated test that is created using recording. Um, the first um, and foremost is, of course, assertions. How do you make sure that what you executed in your test uh, executed successfully? And this is done using assertions or validations. And then how do you reuse your groups? How do you reuse your steps? And I'll cover this also. Um, and then automation in terms of uh, incorporating conditions into your test loops. Um, then I will go into test data management. So testing allows you to extract data from your web page into parameters, and you can also generate uh, random data and you can read data from files and databases. Testing provides features to address cookies and emails, uh, and then invoke REST API refresh your web page, navigate to a site, as well as capture screenshots or capture hover actions. In addition, testing provides you with the ability to incorporate scripts in your test through custom action, uh, CLI action, and run hooks. I'll cover each of these topics in more detail in subsequent slides. Let's look into validation, right? So validations are nothing but assertions. It verifies the test steps have been executed successfully. In my previous demo, I recorded a set of uh, uh, steps to um, log in into my demo application. But how do I verify that I was able to log in successfully? And this is done using validations. There are different types of validation. Um, as you can see, there are custom validation, CLI validation. This is incorporating code to do your validation. If you'd like to download a file and validate that, we do that, as well as validating the subject, the content of an email, validate whether an element is visible, not visible, or validate element text, um, and then validate checkboxes, radio buttons, REST API, and we also do pixel level validation. We do provide the integration to, uh, with a third party solution that actually does the validation of those pixels. So going back to my demo, 
here is the test that we just created. Uh, and uh, we uh, just uh, um, automated the process of login. How do I validate that the login was successful? We can go to the context menu and then click on validations and then use validate element text. So these are different validation that is possible. But before I can add any of these steps here, I need to run the test up to this point so that I have uh, my application available in order to add the validations. So I can now go ahead and say validate uh, element text. I can click on the element that I want to validate, which you see here, hello, John. So typically with most applications, after you log in, there will be a welcome message, a greeting message, and you can use that to validate, or you can use an image or an icon or a, or a menu that shows up after you log in. And those are some of the things that you can use to do your validation. So here I'm validating against a text message, hello, John, and I can make it more generic by using regular expression or JavaScript expression, depending on whatever you want to use uh, to make sure that my login steps were successful. And that's how you can incorporate validation into your test. Let me go ahead and save my test and return back to my presentation. The next thing that you will, I would like to talk about is the concept of groups or reusable components. So testing allows you to reuse certain steps as shared components, shared groups that can be reused across multiple different tests. A quick example would be the login scenario, right? Every time you write a test, you need to log in. And uh, you don't want to be recording your login steps and the validation that goes with it every time. What you can do, you can create a shared group that modularizes your test logic that you can then reuse across multiple tests. This cuts down the amount of maintenance, reduce the amount of clutter in your test editor, as well as um, helps with uh, uh, reusability. So testim supports nested group. This is something that's definitely very, very beneficial if you would like to modularize your cost in a, in a nested fashion. Jumping back into the demo. And here I have my set of login steps. I can drag on my mouse and I can select those steps and then I can go ahead and add a new group. This I can um, say as my login group. And I can make this a shared group. So this will then be available to me in my group sections. So if I search on webinar, there you go, my webinar demo login group available to me add here. But of course, it doesn't make sense to have it twice. So I'll delete that. But that's how you can make your steps and groups reusable that can be used across multiple different tests. The next uh, thing I want to talk about is conditions and loops. So testing supports conditions. What does this do? This enables you to execute your test steps or groups based on certain conditions, whether an element is visible, whether an element is not visible, uh, whether you are able to see certain text, whether uh, a certain code executes uh, with a return statement of true, and so on. So you can do that. Uh, to incorporate conditions. An example would be, okay, if I'm already logged in, I don't want to run the steps to log in and so on, right? Um, similarly, Testim also provides you the ability to uh, use loops to um, run through repeating sets of test data. And this enables you to process list tables or um, repeated data. Let's jump into a demo. Um, I have a test here that is very similar to what we have uh, seen um, uh, previously. So here is my login group, and I'm actually using uh, my uh, demo application, demo.testing.io. And let me kind of uh, put a breakpoint here and log in. And then I'll um, show you um, how we incorporate the login functionality, the conditions, as well as the loop functionality. So testing test reached a breakpoint. And you can see I have actually incorporated a condition for my login group. If I look at the properties of my login group, this is where you would specify your conditions. When do you want to run this step or this group? Always run it, that's the default. Or when element is visible, uh, I'm checking on if the login element is visible, which it was, which is why this uh, group executed, or not visible. 
And then I can also check on element text. I can also use custom code like JavaScript code. If the code returns true, the step or the group will execute, or I can use never, which means commenting out your step. So let's look into the uh, loop functionality. So I have a group here that is configured to run in a loop. And if I look at the properties here, I can see that repeat group, repeat for each item. And which item? It is these um, uh, tabs over here. So I have a application. This is basically a demo application that uh, allows you to book uh, intergalactic travel across multiple different destinations. So I want to go and loop through all of these destinations, get the information about the price and print the price into my console log. And that's what the loop is doing. So if I go to um, go to my um, group that is looping, um, I go to an extract value, which is the destination. I'm capturing the data of my destination into a parameter and I'm clicking on book and then I'm extracting the value, which means the cost of uh, traveling to the destination. And I'm logging all that information uh, through console log into my console. So let me go ahead and uh, run the test, pause my breakpoint and run the test from there. And you will be able to see testing will then go and loop through all of those um, items in my, in my list and then uh, capture the information, log the information into my console log. And the test execution completed successfully. If I um, go to my test log, I should be able to see uh, the different destinations and, uh, and the cost for uh, the fare for each of these uh, destinations. There you go. So the destination is Maidan, the fare, and so on, right? So that's how you would incorporate loops and conditions into a testing test. The next thing uh, like to deal with is test data. So test data is important with any functional test. You would like to use um, um, test data passed onto the test instead of hard-coded tests. This allows you to um, run your test across multiple data scenarios to provide you um, a good test data coverage. So testing provides uh, variables that you can define and also uh, allows you to extract data from your uh, web page into, into variables and uh, that you can use into your test. So you can extract data from an element into a variable and the extraction mode can be string, number, date, regular expression. And we also uh, provide different levels of scope for your parameters. So a uh, local means the test has variable scope will be within the group, just like local variable inside a programming language. Um, the variable scope is test, then the variable is available across all of the steps in the test. And if the variable scope is global, then that variable is available to um, assign or to use the value across multiple different tests if the tests are running as a part of your test group, which is like basically a test suite or a test plan. In addition, testing also provides you the ability to generate uh, random strings. Uh, which can be letters, numbers, and uh, mixed type with variable lengths uh, and with optional prefixes. And you can also specify uh, your scope for those uh, random data. You can also read test data from files, and you can do that uh, from Excel, CSV, JSON files, which can be automatically uh, populated uh, into variables. And uh, test data can also be fed into variables via run hooks. This is an uh, advanced feature of testing that I'll cover later in the presentation. And this can be done during startup or using a CLI action at runtime. So many customers uh, would not want to have your test data stored as part of the test. And you want to read the test data at runtime. So this would be the approach to do that. And you can do that for files, or you can also do that uh, for test data that is read from databases using the same approach, run hooks or CLI action at runtime. So let me um, jump into a demo. Uh, this demo, um, I will be reading data 
from let's see this is not the right one um reading data from a file right so the way you can read data from a file is um using uh, like the test data section and i can upload a file uh, from um from Excel spreadsheet where I have, here is my Excel spreadsheet, I can upload it and it'll convert the data into JSON. And this is what I will then reuse. And this is how the Excel spreadsheet looks like. So you have your uh, parameters uh, defined uh, and then uh, you have the data. You can specify one or more sets of data for your test. And that's how it'll get converted into JSON when it's incorporated into the test. So what I've done here is I have declared two parameters username and password, and I've specified four sets of value. When I run this test from the editor, it'll pick the first set of value and run the test from that. So it will not no longer be using, um, uh, it will no longer be using uh, the John, which is what I used when I recorded the test, but it will be using David, which was the first set of test data, as you can see here, and, and, and log into the application. So let me delete that loop. I've already shown you that but uh, I can now run the test from here. And this will use um, David uh, to log in. There you see it's using um, that data. And you can also see the uh, run parameters here. Uh, there are two parameters to use, username and password. And both of them are asterisks because I've declared username and password to be hidden parameters. And this is, you can provide that here uh, so that your hidden uh, data is not show, showing up in your screenshots that is captured. If I run this test from uh, the test list from here, and this will uh, actually go ahead and run the test with multiple sets of test data, all of the four sets of test data. Also, if you run the test using schedules, like I showed earlier, uh, scheduling or using CLI, then it will use all the four sets of test data that I provided in my test data section. And that's how you incorporate test data uh, from files um, in testing. I will walk you through a um, demo of uh, test reading test data from databases later in the presentation. Testim allows you to invoke REST APIs, uh, very similar to what you would get from Postman applications like Postman. It allows you to invoke REST APIs, it can fetch the response, and then you can process the response to extract, extract uh, parameters from there and populate your variables. So you can um, perform operations like get, post, put, you can um, add, modify, or parameterize your URL, your header, and the body section. I'll, I'll kind of walk you through a demo. And then you can run additional code to extract data from the response to validate whether the API call was successful and also to populate uh, variables that can later be used in the test steps. You can also use REST API to get your test data. So another way of getting test data. Um, jumping into my demo, So here I have um, a step that uh, invokes the REST API. Now, how did I get this? I can go here and context menu, search for API, and here is my API action. And when I add an API action, that's uh, come, this is what will show up. And you can specify your URL, and this can be parameterized. You can uh, invoke any action uh, that you'd like to use for your uh, API. You can specify headers, you can add new uh, header values if you'd like to, and then you can specify your content um, in multiple different formats. And uh, I can now make, uh, make run this call. And then after I, this API call is executed, I will be able to see a response and then extract data from the response. I can check the status code, I can extract data from the response body and response headers. So let me go ahead and run this test. I will run it locally, and I'm using Pet Store, the Swagger API application. And uh, you don't really need uh, to go to a particular URL to invoke an API, but you have to specify something default, which is why I specify the Pet Store API. You don't really need to do that. Uh, so the test completed successfully. If I look at the um, 
if I look at the properties, uh, the details of the test step, I can see now the response um, is enabled. And here is my XML response that came back from Pet Store. And uh, what I was passing was uh, to the API was uh, a name of a doggy. And then in the response, I get um, the ID of the doggy and then the status, whether it is available or not. So that's kind of the response. And I also got some additional header fields that I can use. And um, I'm now extracting data from the response into parameters, name, status, ID. And these are parameters that I can define uh, in other parts, in other sets, steps, and then I can pass it to subsequent steps in the test. But what I'm doing here, I'm just um, printing it in the console. So if I uh, look into my console logs, which I can go using this view screenshot area, this is where you would see in screenshots if there are any, and you can also go to console logs to look into any console logs that you print from that step. And there you go, the three different parameters um, that I populated and uh, printed here. And so this is the data that was obtained using uh, the REST API call. Again, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to type in the chat window and I'll try to answer them towards the end of the presentation. Um, going back to my presentation, um, there are some additional um, actions that testing provides to help you or enhance your test using some additional features like uh, cookies, you can get a cookie and populate uh, information from a cookie into parameters, and then you can use those parameters to set cookies, or you can just use hard-coded values to set cookies. Uh, you can um, generate email addresses for sending emails. Typically, this is used when you are trying to test a scenario where your customers of your application or users of your application need to register and provide their email. Um, so you can use the email generated here to run your test and then testing will receive the email and later on you can do email validation. You can check the subject of the email, you can check the content of the email if it has uh, certain data. You can also use these for two-factor authentication. So you can specify the email and if you get an ID uh, in the email, you can extract that ID and then do two-factor authentication for your application. You also provide uh, actions to refresh your web page, navigate to a different site, on a different um, tab or a totally different window. And then we also provide uh, ability to do a screenshot. There are some additional actions that are also available and I haven't covered all of them like hover and so on. Custom action. So custom action and CLI actions are two approaches the testing users to go ahead and incorporate your custom scripts into a recorded testing test. And custom action allows you to uh, run JavaScript in the browser as a JavaScript function. And it accepts JavaScript variables and HTML variables as function parameters. And you can declare additional parameters or you can access the value of existing parameters and you can populate any JavaScript variables, right? If you return true, that means the step is successful. If you return false, the step is a fail. So you can get more information about um, custom actions and validations using the link that is specified here. Um, let me show you a few demos. There are a number of different scenarios where you may want to use custom action. And here is a, uh, here are some collection of scenarios that are kind of created here for, for demonstration. So I'm going to the website, um, the demo website, testing.io. Uh, and uh, I can use custom action to initialize certain variables. Let's, let's look into that. So I have a few parameters here that I can initialize that I may use later on in the test. Uh, parameters, as I mentioned earlier, can have multiple different scopes. Uh, it can be scoped for the test. It can be for the global. So this is how you would uh, declare your parameters for different scope levels. And you can initialize them. You can use a custom action to initialize them. You can use custom actions to get today's date. So here is a, a code snippet that gets today's date and uh, brings today's date in the console. If, um, and then uh, here is a custom action that gets uh, your um, geolocation and prints the geolocation uh, in the console, right? Some code snippets uh, that uh, you can probably use, or this is how you do it in an automated test. 
on get URL. Another um, customer of mine was asking, how do I get the URL? Because based on the URL, I would like to then go ahead and um, render my page differently. Um, opening a new tab and then opening uh, uh, maybe, oh, this is another uh, interesting one. This is basically you log uh, the number of links that you have. Um, I don't think this is working, so I will probably delete that step. And I can run this um, in my browser. So it will kind of go ahead and run all of those steps. And I'll show you the console logs afterwards. So there you go. The test completed successfully. And I can look at the test log. So we do provide test logs or console logs for each step, which you can go into the console logs here. Um, like, say, for example, if I go here, I should be able to see the console logs for that particular step, like today's date is um, such and such. Or I can go to the test log that shows you all of the logs that are printed in the test. So my today's date, and then here I go my latitude, my longitude, as well as the URL that I captured, and so on. So that's how you can incorporate um, different custom functions that are not available out of the box. Um, in testing as a custom action and use it um, in your test. One of the best practices, make these as shared steps so that uh, different users who are using testing can then reuse them and you don't have to create something similar for every time you need to use something similar in your test. I'll go ahead and close this and I'll show you another demo. And uh, this is also a custom um, action demo uh, that goes and uh, checks all the links that are available on your page and then make, make sure that links are valid. So essentially it gets all the links on the page and then iterates and uh, makes sure that the links are still working. So let me run the test here. And this incorporates a couple of different features. It incorporates custom action and it also has um, a group the, where I am looping through a list of links that I get from uh, from the custom action. So custom action, if I look at it, it is executing a code snippet to get all the document links. And then I'm using a loop mechanism, but here I'm using a custom code for my uh, repeat group. So if I look at my repeat uh, edit here, I mean, condition for looping, I am using the iterator and I'm only iterating for 10 loops. So otherwise it'll take kind of the next 10 minutes to go through all of the different links on the page. So that's what I'm using, a custom a loop mechanism to loop through the steps in a group. So if I double click on the group, I can see the two steps that are executing for each of those links. I'm navigating to the link and then I am iterating. I'm just count iterating the counter. So if I, it's a custom action and I'm incrementing the counter so that I only run uh, 10 uh, such checks. I can also look into go to individual iteration. I can get uh, the value uh, of the link and so on. So that's how uh, another, this is another example of how you can use custom action to um, enhance or augment your test. Um, other examples would be maybe capturing screenshots and uh, comparing or maybe um, doing some uh, processing with your um, emails or PDF and things like that, right, that you download. Jumping back to my presentation. So CLI action is another approach to incorporate uh, code, your custom scripts into test in test. And what's the difference between CLI action and custom action? Custom action is JavaScript that you run on your browser. And CLI action is Node.js script that you'll be executing on your server side. Why do you need this? You, you may use to, you may want to connect to your internal systems that are exposed to the internet, like your databases, your queues, uh, your file systems, you may want to do SSH and other such features. And Node.js has a powerful set of libraries that can perform those functions. So CLI action allows you to incorporate Node.js packages and execute code using those libraries. Um, so TLI Action accepts uh, JavaScript as well as Node.js packages, JavaScript parameters and Node.js packages function parameters. And it uses Node.js package to integrate with various different systems, backend systems that you may have in your environment. 
and you can access and populate JavaScript variables that can be used uh, later on uh, in steps, subsequent steps in your test. Uh, again, CLI action can be used to retest data as well. And if you need more information, uh, here is the link to test team documentation website that provides more information on CLI action. Let's jump into a demo. In this demo, I'm integrating uh, test team with MongoDB. So I have a CLI action here that reads, um, first of all, connects to my MongoDB system, which is running on my local machine. And then uh, it runs a query based on some data that I provided. Uh, essentially, I'm trying to get information uh, for uh, an entry uh, that has a username of uh, a collection that has a username of Aaron, and then I'm passing the data back to a parameter. And I'm populating it and uh, I'm, I'm logging it into my console. So here is the console. I'm also exporting it into parameters that I will be using to log into my application. So the login group is very similar to what we had before. We are still using the demo application, demo.testim.io, and I'll be using data that is read from my Mongo database and uh, use it for login purposes. So I can run the test. Can you hear is my test window? Let's see here. Okay, there we go. Let me run it again. Uh, this was not showing up while it's executed. So let me go ahead and run the test again. And uh, I now go to, uh, it opens up the, of course, the application under test. I'm reading from the Mongo database and there you go. It's reading, it's using Aaron and then it logged in uh, successfully. So if I look into my console logs, right, I can see that uh, here, uh, let's see. I should be able to see the data that was read and let's look at the test logs. Um, come on. I was expecting to see lo logs here, but uh, maybe it's commented out. But as you can see, I was able to log in uh, to my application using um, Aaron. And uh, that was the data that was read from the uh, from the application from the database. So run hooks are an advanced feature of testing. This allows you to run code uh, before um, and after you run your test. So testing CLI enables test execution after a successful build. Testing CLI is the command line interface. Um, not the CLI action, but it's the command line interface that allows you to run tests from command line, integrate your test team test with your CI systems like Jenkins, SteamCity, CircleCI, Azure DevOps, and so on. And this CLI uses configuration files as, um, as a CLI um, input, an argument. And you can specify a configuration file is a JavaScript file that allows you to uh, run any script, Node.js script that you provide there um, before a test or after a test or before a suite or after a suite run. And uh, this is available through configuration file as a part of your CLI. And also uh, recently we have added um, hooks as a capability that you can use inside your test itself uh, using test configuration. I'll kind of show some of that to you. So if I go to my demo, here on the test configuration if you remember um, this is the first step if i click on the cog wheel here that takes me or the cog wheel here takes me to my configuration for the test and under this you see configuration uh, pencil button and edit the configuration and you see here before test handler before step handler and then um, so on after test handler so these are hooks that allows you to incorporate in this case you can have a shared step that can be added and the shared step can have your custom JavaScript, custom CLI a script and so on. And this is how you would add hooks into your application from the editor. Um, if you would like to use uh, the CLI um, and uh, pass the configuration file as an argument 
to the testing command line interface. This is how you'd use it. So testing CLI looks like this, testing, and then you have dash dash token. You provide your account token, you provide your uh, project token and the grid where you want to run your test. This is the Selenium grid and the name of your test. And this can be a suite, this can be a test plan. You can also have additional uh, arguments here like uh, parallel or multiple different browsers. But this takes uh, this argument from a config file. The config file is a JavaScript file. And here is a sample, I'll, I'll quickly explain. This allows you to run uh, scripts as a part of your test run. And this scripts can then include things like connecting to your database, which is the example that you see here on the right. I'm connecting to an um, MS SQL database, and then I'm doing um, load users. I'm getting the user information for um, certain data, right? Based on certain data. And then I'm passing the data into the test before I execute a test. You see here on the top in the CLI, I'm running a test. This is an individual test. And before the test executes, I'm passing the data that I read from the database using this uh, script here and the before test hook in the testing config.js. And that's how in, can incorporate reading data from databases, files, or other systems, and then passing it into your test at runtime. So I've covered um, uh, some of the ways how you can enhance your test um, that you recorded using testing through testing actions, through validations, through logic, uh, and custom uh, scripts. What are some of the best practices? So in terms of test design, uh, creating a structured test, a short single purpose test is important. Um, and you can, then you can compose your complex test from the simple steps, like using reusable groups. Um, you can write independent test and isolated test. This helps you um, run your test in parallel because they are not dependent on each other. Um, you can add validations at turnover points. Um, in the example that I showed you um, where I try to log in, I added a validation to make sure that my login steps were successful, and then I created a group. So you encapsulate the validation as a part of the steps that you're trying to validate in a group. Um, you can use setup and teardown steps um, to set up your test data, um, to make sure that um, your initial state of a test is consistent every time. Because when you run a test, uh, if you're expecting the application to log in, then it should not be logged in. Otherwise, you have to incorporate conditions and things like that. Um, in terms of test data, uh, you always your test should be data-driven. You should not have test data hard-coded into your test so that you can get wider test data coverage. Naming convention is important. That way you can manage uh, the names of your tests and groups and steps. Um, uh, in a way, it's, it is easy to understand so that this can be tied back into your um, test management systems like test trail and things like that. And the reusability. Reusability is key. It's important to reduce um, your tests and eliminate those tests that are not being used. Uh, so that you recycle them and then reuse steps and groups that are used across multiple different uh, uh, tests. So Testim is working on various areas on uh, using AI to optimize your test. And uh, Testim is actually working on AI features to um, enable you to uh, reuse groups in an automated fashion. So it will identify the steps that are being used across multiple different tests and then suggest and recommend groups that you can um, then uh, create in an automated fashion. So the key takeaways, um, you can use testing to record um, an automated test and that will be kind of the baseline that you start with and then you can enhance your automated test that you created using recording by using validations, logic, out-of-the-box actions, and custom scripts. And um, it's always a good practice to improve um, test effectiveness and uh, reduce maintenance using some of the best practices that I presented earlier and uh, that are out there in the industry regarding automated tests. Uh, thank you for attending my session today. Um, if you have any questions, uh, uh, please um, type it in the chat window um, or send me an email. Uh, I, can, I can be reached at uh, at testim.io email or through LinkedIn. 
and uh, thanks for your time.